somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back that's the answer this is the appleton oak and i'm mason quinn guys tonight we are checking out chapter 17 of avatar the last airbender this is called the northern air temple these are so much fun i can't wait to get into it answer well i guess without further ado let's go Take a closer look. It's, it's it Kevin. Might not no, it's be Kevin. A giant parrot, but a flying man. Wait, what? Secret group of airwalkers who laugh oh. at gravity. <laughs> gravity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's taking up a collection. You know, we must be getting pretty far north because there's a lot of snow on the ground here. Thanks for the story. Tell it to the cap. Wow. Much obliged. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a hundred years ago your great grandpa met them. Great grandpappy saw the airwalkers last week. Oh. Uh, wait, what? Last week. We're almost to the Northern Air Temple. Are those all airbenders flying around? Airbenders. No, they're not. You can tell by the way they move. They're not airbending. Those people have no spirit. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh they've oh. got gliders with fans on them. I see. Ah, Aang's getting a little jelly. He's going to show oh. off. <laughs> oh. Ow. Ow. We better find some solid ground before it finds us. There you go. Set her down, Appa. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, a lot of folks in the comments commented on the, how the animation gradually gets oh, yeah. better, and it certainly has. Do more than fancy gliding. <laughs> He's got his tongue out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can do that, but here's a good one. Ooh, oh, he's doing the, the old, the old nice. small. <laughs> I thought it was nice. He's going to do some skywriting. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if that's a, a propellant or if it's <laughs> just for skywriting. <laughs> 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 His face. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Let's yeah. be honest. I was impressed. You know, I was wondering if he was in a wheelchair yeah. when he was in that. Yeah, the way his legs were bandaged. Be the Avatar! This glider chair is incredible! Wait until you see the other stuff my dad designed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. The dad who designed special stuff for his kid. Yeah. I like that. Ooh, that looks like an angry Appa there. <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. Everything's powered by hot air. Please is unbelievable. All that to make an ice cube. No, oh, because it's supposed paintings. to be the history of yeah, my people. Yeah, that's why. Uh... It's nice to see at least one part of the temple that isn't ruined. Oh, oh no. no. What are these guys doing? Don't you know enough to stay away from construction sites? We have to make room for the bathhouse. You just destroyed something sacred. <gasps> Oh, oh, oh it, dude, that's their construction <laughs> equipment. I, I don't think he cares. I've seen it when the monks were here. I know what it's supposed to be like. But you're 12. 112. He's the Avatar. Who said you could be here? My people became refugees after a terrible flood. I needed somewhere to rebuild, and I stumbled across this place. We're just in the process of improving upon what's already here. Isn't that what nature... <laughs> oh, she didn't wipe her eyes. Look at the time. How can you tell the time from that thing? Watch. Four flashes, four hours past midday. Nice. Four oh candle. If you like that, <laughs> wait till you see my finger safe knife sharpener. Only took me three tries to. <laughs> <laughs> Only took him three tries. I want to show you something. It's just like the one in the other air temple. Only an airbender can open it. Oh, that's like we saw the fire. Mm -hmm. Well, remember <clears throat> we saw it in the when he went to the southern air temple. Remember he opened it up. I wanted to stay that way. I just wanted you to know it was here. Thanks. Surprised he didn't want to go in there. No, it went in there. It was all the previous avatars, I believe. Why would you want to use fireflies for light? They did that in pitch black. <laughs> non flammable light source. 
Cover your nose and they hold your breath. Black. Pitch, black. Pitch black with Vin Diesel. It's filled to the brim with natural gas. We have gas leaks, and they're nearly impossible to find. The wind will carry you. It supports something inside you, and that something takes over when you fly. I think I was born without that something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pass. Spirit, that's the something you're talking about. I suppose it is. Are you ready? No. <laughs> you're not ready, so you go anyways. Yeah. Huh? Just make sure you keep your mouth closed so you don't swallow a bug. <laughs> of course. Even though Teo's not an airbender, he really does have the spirit of one. If you want to see what's in that room, I'd be happy to open the door for you. How do I land this thing? What if I land over now? <laughs> <laughs> swallow the bug. Huh? Oh. That egg was just part of last week's lunch. Weak old egg smell. Quick, find that egg. egg? Weak old egg smells Natural a lot gas. like gas. <laughs> How could something that's so small make such a big stink? That's the solution. If we put a whole mess of rotten eggs in the cellar where the gas seeps up, the gas will mix with the smell of rotten eggs. Then you just follow your nose to the place where the smell is coming from and plug up the hole where the gas is escaping. Something's wrong. Uh-oh. Uh... Oh, got some weaponry here. Oh, Fire Nation. This is a nightmare. You don't understand. You're making weapons for the fire. Nation. Makes sense. They would find somebody like him to do that. Explain all this. Fire Nation soldiers found our settlement. They were going to destroy everything. I offered my services. When are they coming? Very soon. Oh, boy. You need to leave. We're not leaving. Then hide. Give me what you owe us so I can be on my way. Right this way. The deal's off. Oh. Oh. Get out of here. <laughs> the destruction of this temple will be on your head. Boy, Aang's still got a lot to learn. Oh, man. This is rough. This is bad. How can we possibly keep them all away? We control the sky. I want to help. There we go. All so right. We're... This is going to be interesting. War balloon. Uh, yeah. This boy's a genius. You're a genius. See, the... <laughs> <laughs> Once you did, it just kept going. How do you keep a lid on hot air? If only we knew. <laughs> <laughs> if you control the hot air, you control the war balloon. We got four kinds of bombs. Smoke, slime, fire, stink. I mean, if something smells bad enough, it would be really distracting and very difficult to fight. Oh, yeah. You know. It would. Where's Sokka with the war balloon? We'll have to start without it. Look at Aang, just ready oh, to oh lead. Boy. Ready to lead. Yep. You know, he didn't hesitate at all. He was, like, just ready to go to battle. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, oh is that slime? No, oh, yeah. hit him with the slime. They must have said, oh. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, hit him with an avalanche. Snow. Yeah, they... Well, that was pretty awesome how he caught his, <laughs> yep. his glider. Appa's oh, just hovering. Whoa! Oh. I thought they were gonna try to uh to, like, Appa? Net Appa. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, they didn't expect those, did they? Backup grappling hook. Yeah. Could use another avalanche right about now. Oh, that's all, that's all he had to do. <laughs> yeah, well, look at that. Oh, they just oh over. what? That is crazy. I remember my dad tinkering with the counterbalancing system. Something to do with water. Can you get me close to one? If only we had a water bender, huh? Mm, if only we had a water bender. <laughs> ah! Oh! That's so tough without your wheels. <laughs> oh, oh, all the soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> I think we forget how big Appa is sometimes. Come on, Sokka. Where's that war balloon? Oh, that's a lot of that's slime. slime. Why aren't they shooting at us? The insignia. They think we're all. Ah, Oops. Uh, Bombs away. Is it stop? Uh, 
You smell that? Rotten eggs! That's where the gas is escaping! That's our fuel source! Oh! oh, oh I see what's happening here! Oh, this is gonna be big. Oh. They're retreating! We're going down! <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm really glad you guys all live here now. That means a lot. As long as we've got the skies, we'll have the Fire Nation on the run. Yeah, but what if they come back? This defeat is the gateway to many victories. Oh, they got their technology. Mm, now they- Oh, uh, what a cliffhanger. <laughs> all right, there was episode 17. Mm-hmm. As always, a lot of fun. And, you know, this one, it, it started off with, I, I think, a pretty- heavy you know theme of what's the cost of technology and the progression and the quality of people's lives versus you know saving something that you know might be sacred or might be very meaningful to some people so there's you know kind of that inner struggle i guess of you know progress and technology and that sort of thing but you know the the one thing that jumped out at me was just how much ang's power is growing mm -hmm. um he's getting pretty ridiculous in what he's able to do now. And we've seen these first now 17 episodes and, uh, Prince, uh, Zuku, Zuko or Zuko. Like I know they had uh, a couple of battles earlier on in some other episodes, but he's, he get the, Ang would mop the floor with them at this point. <laughs> he's, he's so powerful. So I got to believe that the, the prince is going to come into play uh, at some point again later on, but I don't think they're going to be enemies right now because, like I said, Aang could just totally crush him if he wanted to, I think. And um, again, it was good to see Sokka get some love, finally coming up with some ideas. You're a genius. He's, uh, he's not the necessarily just the butt of the jokes anymore. And, it, you know, again, we saw Aang, you know, ready to you know, jump right into battle uh, to take on the Fire Nation. And maybe it was uh, a little bit too soon. I mean, he kind of made the choice yeah. for the people at the yes. temple. He's like, well, we're doing this, and I hope you're on board. So there's still a little bit for him to learn as far mm -hmm. as his ego putting other people in danger. I think he still needs to uh, to kind of learn on that a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, overall, just another another great episode. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. And I was just going to say uh, before we started that, it's so nice to come in and knowing that I can relax and just watch the airbender and have some fun. I know a lot of you guys said in the comments, Oh, just wait, it could get serious. It's not going to be all fun and enjoyable for very much longer, but I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Well, obviously he came to this episode. He, he was excited to get to the Northern air temple. He, he was hoping to find more of his kind because you know, after he was at the Southern Air Temple, he saw that there was no one there, and it really hurt him, and he was hoping to find more like him, and he got super excited, and then he saw, jumped right down because they weren't actual airbenders there. They are mm -hmm. refugees trying to live their best lives, but, you know, he saw that they did have the same spirit as airbenders. They still embraced, like, technology to try and be like airbenders, and, you know, he really connected with them. And then, you know, unfortunately, he had to see that, you know, the dad was building stuff for Fire Nation, which is unfortunate. Yeah, but in his hand. but then, like you said, too, he jumped the gun on fighting because you can see, like, he's – it was partly, I think, the anger of being at North, at the North Northern Air Temple that, his, that he didn't find more airbenders there. I think it was part that that made him angry. And then he saw that he's like, this guy is being corrupt and I need to, I need to step in. So – it's going to start to get more and more cooking, and I'm just so happy. And, uh, just so happy to see you guys yeah, alive. And, uh, and, and Tio, or Theo is his name, he looks, a lot, he looks a lot like Link from the Legend of Zelda <laughs> series that I remember as a kid. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, the, these are definitely getting uh, more serious as we go. Um, you know, I thought this was a, a good episode that, um, that definitely had you, like, thinking on both side of some pretty you know major i guess you could say situations or you know like the temple for example we know the airbenders haven't been there for what 100 years mm -hmm. right and so you have this temple and ang is upset because it doesn't look the way it used to but people found uh and they found shelter there and it's like you know as as a society when we find old temples old pyramids old things like that we generally want to preserve them mm -hmm. but when a, a situation like this where it's like well if, if it's been sitting there for 100 years and somebody can like 
live there and be safe there. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you think that the people that previously inhabited it would just want it to be like, uh, you know, you know, you know, worshiped as this sacred place or like have people use it? You know, it's like, like imagine like moving out of your house and granted this isn't a, <laughs> you, you know, leave it, you leave it pristine. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you know, but your house may not be sacred, you know, it might not be a sacred thing, but like if I know I'm leaving my house for like 10 years, it's just going to sit there and somebody's like, man, this could really serve as a, as a nice place for somebody else to live and you know, have a roof over their head. Like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> well, what if Elvis came back to Graceland? Well, this is, See, this is, that's, he, that's my only I'm argument I got. Brought up Elvis here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you have to wonder if the airbenders are people who were looking out for the, the best interests of other people, would they have opened their doors to refugees, I guess, is kind of the, the question that I'm yeah. thinking. So is it the people who previously lived there that, that you know, that, that you're trying to, you know, kind of uh, memorialize with the temple? Would they not want the new people there or would they, you think be, they happy, would. be happy that they were there? So I thought that was cool. Um, I like that the dad um, built the gliders for his kid. And we see this stuff, you know, every year around Halloween, we see these really, really heartwarming pictures of kids in wheelchairs and how much their their dads and their moms go out of their way to build like these elaborate Halloween costumes. Yeah. So even if just for one night, their kids can feel normal and have something different. Um, I saw the, I'm gonna get choked up talking about it. I saw a video of a mom and she had a son with cerebral palsy and she built a cage out of PVC pipe and used bungees connected to a belt in the middle and put a, a, a skateboard in the middle, connect the skateboard with bungees to the bottom. And her son was cerebral palsy who couldn't um, stand on his own. She pushed him around in this contraption in a skate park. Nice. And all of a sudden, this kid that couldn't stand, if you look it up, if you, you know, if you if you look on YouTube and type in, you know, skate park cerebral palsy, just have some Kleenex ready because it's you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's emotional. But so that was really cool to me. Like, Hey, look, my son got injured. He couldn't, he couldn't walk. So you know what? I'm going to make sure he can fly. So, um, I didn't want to overlook that. Um, you know, yeah, it was, a, so. it was a really heavy, a heavy topic about the parent making a sacrifice, you know, and not that long ago, if you look in our catalog, um, we watched a movie on world war two called Jojo rabbit where, you know, we talked a little bit, and look, I know this is a, a loose comparison, but we talked a little bit about, you know, some of the the, the German soldiers who, you know, th they were just people, right? But they were forced into bad situations where, you know, they either had to look out for the well-being of themselves and their family versus, you know, making this moral decision to, and it's, I mean, God, it's, obviously it's two completely different worlds from something that is a real historical piece versus this, but it's a similar thing. Like the dad had to make weapons for bad people to ensure the safety of his son and his family. And he did that. So man, the show's like, you know, it started off and, and it was like, oh, it's just a fun show yeah. about a kid. And man, like these are getting to be mm -hmm. like heavy, heavy topics. Um, Amazing. You know, Mason Quinn, you brought up the point and, and answer talked about it too. Like ang has got to think a little bit more about, um, you know, how his actions are going to impact the well-being of others. You know, he, he stepped in, you guys are done here. And it's like, they barely won that battle. Yeah. And now the firebenders have the, the war balloon technology and who knows if they're going to come back with 20 or 30 of those war balloons. Like you might think you have the upper hand cause you got a dozen people with gliders. Well, they come back with 30 of those war balloons and another, you know, 30 of those crawler mechanical things. It's like, then what, yeah. you know, and it had Ang just, you know, just pulled it back a little bit and said, okay, let's, let's plan a little bit better for something. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it could have put them in a better situation. It's hard to say what's going to happen. I agree with Mason Quinn Ang powers really seem to be developing, but he's still not in a position where he's going to take on the, the whole fire nation. So God, I feel like we're. <laughs> <laughs> like the like the level of the, the level of like seriousness that I just I just put into that wrap yeah. up for an animated show like it I never goes pictured to show it happening. Yeah. Goes to show but yeah. it's you know it's it's some some really brilliant writing and that's what I'm really starting to realize is the people who wrote this show are like what if we did an animated series but like really good writing on like heavy topics and tried to work that in. So yeah. this was a great episode and I cannot wait to see what comes next.
Well, there you have it. So without further ado, that's Appleton Oak. That's Mason Quinn, and I am, of course, the answer. We'll catch you on the next one. Was that like a cook? Like an otter? I to complain, but I can't otter to to fly bear? any higher. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with Appa? Why don't we all get on your back and you can fly us to the North whoa, Pole? Whoa, whoa. I'd love to. I was going to say, like, that's out of character for yeah. Aang to yeah. snap back like that. There's nothing up here. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh they oh. caught him? No. I think it just caught him. We found the water tribe. Why are they? Why are they being jerks? Oh, they don't know who that is. He's heading north. The Northern Water Tribe. I oh, remember. It's Lucius Malfoy, <laughs> the voice. Yeah. The Water Tribe is a great nation. We'll need a massive invasion force. You know, so they... that's the guy's voice from Malfoy. Yeah. yeah, Lucius Malfoy. The Northern Water Tribe. You know, if they wait any longer, Ang is going to be so powerful. He's just going to take that whole Fire Nation and just flick them like nothing. This is oh, pretty awesome. Got locks Can't going on here. How many waterbenders live up here? Look at that. Oh, it's like Star Wars. <laughs> but they smell bad on the outside. <laughs> oh my God. It's like he's on a Macy's Day yeah, Parade yeah, yeah. float or something. The combination of ice and water is very, it's very interesting visually. Yeah. Ooh. Who's this now? Easy. Oh. <laughs> He's in love. Four loves, four seasons. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we celebrate the arrival of our brother and sister, and they have brought with them the Avatar. We also celebrate my daughter's 16th. Oh, I was going to say, mm -hmm. you know who the daughter is. ...of marrying age. Now, Master Paku and his students will perform. I just hope that she marries for love and this isn't some sort of positioning <laughs> story like a, a House of the Dragon. <laughs> it's a good match. <laughs> He's always... Uh... Sokka, Southern Water Tribe. Very nice to meet you. Oh, she got the eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like a prince myself. Prince of what? A lot of things. Oh, no. Uh, oh, his sister's busting him out. Apologies, prince Give Sokka. The mush. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> fucking bad. I'm thinking maybe we could do we an could activity <laughs> together. Do an activity? He's sweating. Very smooth. Master Baku, don't expect any special treatment. My friend and I can't wait to start training with you. I'll see you both at sunrise. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. For the last time, I'm not playing the Sungi horn. There's a bit of a problem. Yeah, this yeah. bastard. I've recruited them for a little expedition to the North Pole. He's taking everyone. Ah! Oh! Is he gonna grab swords off the wall? Oh, he's thinking about it. No. Oh, he's remembering the swords. Those are the s oh. Yeah, he had the mask. <coughs> Have you heard of the blue spirit? Justice will catch up with him soon. General Iroh, the offer to join my mission still stands. Okay, so he told I, the uncle he could come along. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I think he's not, uh, not, the, not the prince. This is my friend. In our tribe, it is forbidden for women to learn water bending. Oh, boy. I thought he was going to say he'd only train one of them. Uh, Here, the women learn from Yagoda to use their water bending to heal. If you won't teach Katara, then I won't learn from you. Wait. Boy, Aang's just been flying off the handle. You have to learn from Master Paku. <laughs> Boy, your dad sure knows how to throw a party. It wasn't as much fun after you left. Ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 blushing. See more of each other. Do an activity, you. <laughs> oh, brutal. I'll meet you on that bridge tonight. Oh. I'll see you <laughs> oh. What? What time? At what time? You said tonight. At what time? <laughs> when it's dark. For the mission I have in mind. Oh, it's the pirates. Mm -hmm. I believe you're acquainted with Prince Zuko. Oh. Are you Yagoda? Welcome. Why don't you try an easier one? Thanks for the lesson. I recognize this carving. 
You're the spitting image of Kana. How do you know my grand-grand's name? Oh. She was born here. Your grandmother had an arranged marriage with a young waterbender. He carved that necklace for her. It's a lovely night for a walk. Or just stay in your room and sit in the dark. Man, just back then, no, like, no phones, no TV. Oh. Just you and your thoughts. Yeah. Oh, sneaking aboard. That guy doesn't look sketchy. Oh, Careful easy. with the blasting jelly. Well, blasting gonna, they're gonna, jelly. They're gonna blow his ship up? Uncle, is that you? That looks to be the game plan. Oh, he's gonna f spoil the attack. Oh. Or not. Oh. 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 That looks like a pretty tough one to make it out from. Zuko. There's no way we lost Zuko. I don't think so, but it would be an advantage if his uncle thought he was gone, though. I carved it myself. It's a bear. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fish. I shouldn't have asked you to come here. Whoa, whoa. Oh, there's something going on. Yeah, she told the dad she was going to meet him, and dad's like, he's not a real prince. You can't fall in love with that guy. Yeah. One minute she wants to go out with me, and the next she's telling me to get lost. So how's waterbending training? Master <laughs> Poophead won't teach her because she's a girl. Poophead. <laughs> Why don't you just teach her, Aang? That way, you have someone to practice with, and I get to learn waterbending. Come on, Aang. <laughs> Whoa, that was cool. Yeah, he just floated up. up. Master Paku said this move is all about sinking and floating. I got it! That wasn't me. Uh-oh. You have disrespected me, my teachings, and my entire culture. You are no longer welcome. You know he has to save the world, right? Yeah. No, well, he already said he, he doesn't get any special treatment. Uh. I suspect he might change his mind if you apologize to him. No. Oh, she's testing him. I'll be outside if you're man enough to fight me. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. Boy, our... I'm sure she didn't mean that. Yeah, I think she did. <laughs> our crew is just flying <laughs> off the handle. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I think she did. <laughs> the Fire Lord will not be pleased when he learns who was responsible. Pirates. They wanted revenge. Oh, this sketchy. Have you reconsidered my offer? Yes, I accept. Someone needs to slap some sense into that guy. Go back to the healing huts with the other women where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> He's just throwing it in her face. Oh! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Study closely. Oh, oh! Got her. Well, he's not hitting her with the ice yet, so he's oh. keeping it pretty cordial. Yeah, just the water. I'm not going to hurt you. Ow! <laughs> Saka. You can't knock me down! Ooh. Yeah, she was doing pretty good up till about there. <laughs> the other girls <laughs> in the healing class are cheering for her. Oh, look at that. Oh. That's pretty cool. Ice discs. He looked impressed there for a second, mm -hmm. didn't he? Come on, get up. I'm impressed. But you still won't teach me. No. Oh, that's oh. pretty cool. Oh, oh no, necklace. no, just. Sh oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Come back here. I'm not finished yet. This is my necklace. No, oh, come on. I made this 60 <gasps> years ago. My grand cran was supposed to oh, marry me. Oh, oh. oh boy. Uh, what? Chow doesn't suspect a thing. I knew it. Thank you, Uncle. Stay hidden until we get to the North Pole. Good luck. Yeah, there's no way we lose him. Mm. Grand Gran wouldn't let your tribe's stupid customs run her life. <laughs> Go get her. Yeah. Yeah. This is all accelerated yeah, pretty <laughs> real quick. <laughs> what do you want from me? I think you're beautiful. You don't understand. I think I do understand now. No. You don't have to say anything. Let her finish. Oh! Oh, look at that. <laughs> I do like you, but we can't be together. It's because I'm engaged. Oh, hey. Uh, hey. Yep. Well, easier to hide it when it's on a necklace and not on the old <laughs> ring finger. It's <laughs> true. What do you think you're doing? It's past sunrise. You're late. Ah, he's going to train her. <sighs> he changed his mind. Set a course for the Northern Water Tribe. Oh, oh that's a lot. Oh, that's a, that's a real, fleet. real lot. Ah. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> All right. So- <laughs> All right. There, there it was. Oh, man, another great episode of Avatar. And, you know, again, we're kind of seeing this theme throughout the last couple is that uh, all of our main heroes are are really kind of quick to kind of fly off the handle a little bit and kind of jump and put themselves and others into situations that maybe aren't the greatest. And I just I really think they need to meet somebody to teach them a little bit of patience and a little bit of a cool head. And hopefully they eventually meet that person. But uh, yeah, I mean, Aang was doing good with the water bending. Uh, so was Katara and uh, Sokka. He's oh boy. He got to kiss the girl in the end, but she was promised for somebody else. So we'll see how that goes. But again, another very fun episode of Avatar. Well, as you saw, the fun revelation of Grand Grand was from the northern waterbending tribe instead of being from southern. So you you could see how the customs are a little different then and like how they're just forced to just be healers. And then I... You know, then you'll find out more and more about the watermending skills of the Southern tribe. But that was a big takeaway from this. But then also Saka almost getting the girl, but she's already engaged. Well, we'll see how that plays out well, after he can, all. Maybe you can challenge her uh, fiancé to, to, a, a, to a ski hill down K2. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting when you look at uh, tribes and, and native people and things like that. And they have their customs. Mm -hmm. And on one hand, you want to respect older customs, not just for nostalgia, because it's the way things have always been done. And it's Mm -hmm. it's weird when you when you look at that, right? Like our society, it's like some people like very nostalgic or uh, romanticize the way things used to be. Oh, this is how it's always been. It was so much better when you know back then. That's how it used to be. And it's like. There are great things, I think, about, you know, respecting, you know, culture and heritage and traditions. Mm -hmm. But there's also times when we need to move into the modern era. And uh, I think it's interesting that they touched on this. And, you know, it was cool that Aang stood up for Katara and said, look, uh, you know, if you're not going to teach her, then I'm not going to learn either. You know, Mm -hmm. granted, and Katara kind of came back and did what was best for Everybody mm-hmm. knowing that Aang is going to need to know water bending in order to, you know, take on the um, the Fire Nation. So I like that. Um, I like that the the older gentleman I forget his name, you know, kind of came around in the end, and it's kind of like this cool lesson, like, you know, if I can change. <laughs> And you can change. Oh my God. And everybody can change. You're never too old. Do we need a translator to, from Russian for that? Yeah. <laughs> You're never too old to change. And there is a lot to be said about hanging on to customs, mm-hmm. hanging on to traditions. But there's also a lot to be said about um, you know progress and, and moving forward. And I think that's a that's a fine line. And uh, you know somebody as talented as Katara, look, there's nothing wrong with with you know using the water bending for healing yeah, they're gonna need that they're gonna need that right yeah. but let people do what they're most skilled at what they're passionate about and where they best fit and uh don't just say hey we can't do that because you know you're a, a girl and um it's an interesting subject i had a at a course uh at uh, my old employer you know it was uh, like uh, I worked for a Fortune 500 investment company, and they they were very forward thinking as far as making sure all the employees, you know, respected, you know, cultures mm-hmm. and all that. And you know, we had uh, an interesting discussion about um, about women in the workplace and things like that. And you know, and even you know, I brought up like you know, I have I have three nieces, you know, and if they want to be badasses, then <laughs> I'm going to encourage them to be yeah. badasses, <laughs> right? And sometimes you look at things differently um you know when when you're put in different situations and and now you know watching something like this when you see a young woman who like wants to go after her goals and certainly you know it's not like before having nieces i didn't you know <laughs> think that but sometimes <laughs> things like that change your perspective and yeah. you know obviously with daughters and stuff yeah. like that it's the same thing i mean your daughter came to you and said hey i, I want to do this you wouldn't you would as the dad would so, be like oh no no, 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 no that's not for you, you settle down so it's uh you it's, can only it, heal people you can't go and fight it's cool to see um a, a show represent that and do it and, and they I, th- I like how they did it they did it in a very it was a very organic way it felt organic mm-hmm. you know and, it, and sometimes we're in 2022 and um and we've talked about this in other podcasts i think representation 
absolutely matters in movies, but sometimes they force certain people into certain roles mm -hmm. just to fit like this. We need to have this character and we need to have that yeah. character. And sometimes it feels like it's forced. This didn't feel like it was forced. No. It, it, nothing with yeah. Katara does. It very much feels no. like and she's the, a badass. She's going to go out and get stuff done. And, well, and uh, we, we saw it earlier on too with uh, Sokka and then the Women Warriors, you know, uh, way back in like the fourth episode. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. He was getting his butt kicked. The Warrior Girl was getting his butt kicked and it made him think yeah. differently as yeah. well. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, an another, another great lesson just about. Um, you know, Katara sticking to her guns and then to an older gentleman uh, opening up his eyes and being uh, being willing to change. Uh, as far as uh, as far as Sokka's story, look, this is one we've seen. Um, we've seen a million times over Can't get in, uh, in movies and TV shows and everything. Somebody who's supposed to be in an arranged marriage um, but falls in love with somebody they're not supposed to. You know, so... Um, you know, we're going to have to oh, see yeah. how this plays yeah, we're, out. We're getting closer and closer to that big, <sighs> big ending of season yeah. one. It's so for Appleton Oak, Mason Quinn. I'm, of course, the answer. We'll catch you on the next one, pals. God, I, I keep so. wondering whether the Fire Nation... It's just going to ruin their entire, like, where they live. Yeah, you know? just try to melt everything. Melt the structures that they have as their homes. Oh, who's she pre Nice She's try, good. Pupil Sangok. Oh. A couple of more years and you might be ready to fight a sea sponge. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Anyone care for a rematch with Katara? Oh, she's rolling through everybody. <laughs> Working them. Care to step into the sparring circle? Check this out. <laughs> he knows Not how to make impressed. a snowman. That's going to be useful in a massive war with the Fire Nation. So they don't have palaces in the Southern Tribe? It's not exactly a cultural hub. <laughs> cultural <laughs> hub. This is wrong. I know what you need. You need to meet my good friend, Appa. I can show you the word. Appa and I go. <laughs> oh. oh. That boy. Looks like you haven't been giving Alpha enough attention. So how does this work? Oh, here we go. Oh, He's showing off. Carpet ride, huh? <laughs> I can't believe you do this every day. Yeah, we pretty much live up here. Is it always this cold in the sky? Ah. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Oh my God. Oh, Slush snap. Woo, yeah. Good time. Uh oh. Uh oh. oh that's look at that. Smoke? Ashes. Hey, look. What's happening? Snow that has ash in it. Yeah, it's got to be ashes. It's soot mixed with snow. It's the Fire Nation. They've closed in on the North Pole. Uh, not good. People will study the great Admiral Zhao. Tell the captains to prepare for first strike. This guy's ego is going to get him in trouble. Just like in the episode when he burned all of his own ships. We'll be landing soon. Do you have a plan? I'm working on it, Uncle. Oh, he just doesn't have the scar to see. He has a black eye from yeah. freaking getting blown out of his ship. I can't see you anymore. What? Uh, can we talk about this later? And it's too confusing to be around you. You know, we haven't been introduced to the the fiance yeah, yet no, either. We haven't. You don't even seem to like him. I have duties to my father, to my tribe. Goodbye. As we approach the battle for our existence, I'm going to need volunteers. Count me in. Who's trying to hold it together? Mm-hmm. I wasn't there when the Fire Nation attacked my people. I'm going to make a difference this time. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> All right, dude, let's go. That was from one? Oh, oh, better do boy. some airbending on those. Better do some, some... Oh, they're just launching them. Yep, yep. Katara! Nice. Oh, there go. done. There goes that <laughs> catapult. Got out. Oh, oh, right into the ship. <laughs> there goes that ship. Nice. Neither of those are working again. No. Oh, Spidey Sense is there. <laughs> Ooh, this guy's hammers on chains. Oh, <laughs> I got him. Uh. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
I was going to say there's no. a lead of them, though. That was the lead. You know, if we can get some sort of tsunami. Yeah, you know? just a Fire Nation Navy. Fire Navy uniforms don't look like that. Of course they do. Sokka is from our sister tribe, Han, and I value his input. I bet that's Han. her fiancé. Is to determine the identity of their commanding officer. His name is Zhao. Middle-aged, big sideburn. <laughs> <laughs> Han, show Sokka your respect. I expect nothing less from my future son-in-law. I knew it! I knew it! Princess Yue's marrying you? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, we need a tsunami or something. It's almost twilight, Admiral. The waterbenders draw their power from the moon. I am working on a solution. But for now, daybreak it is. I can't fight them all. You're fishing for an octopus, my nephew. I don't need your wisdom right now, Uncle. I just nag you because ever since I lost my son, I think of you as my own. I know, Uncle. Remember your breath of fire. I will. Let me tell you, Soka, I've courted a lot of girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's saying his name wrong on purpose. Uh... Yue is nice and everything, but the points I'll gain with the chief aren't bad either. Princess Yue is wasted on a self-absorbed weasel like you. What do you care? You're just a simple rube from the sun. <laughs> rube. Rube. <laughs> That's enough, Sucker. You're off the mission. We'll take out this Admiral Cho in no time. Tempers once again. What are those seal turtles? <laughs> hoping to see some more uh, four-winged penguins. You know, and last of the Mohicans, they had the two men who both were ah, that's right, sort of battling together in love with the same woman. Coming up for air somewhere. Oh, that's risky. That's ballsy. Uh, that's real risky. You get out, you gotta dry back up and... Our strength comes from the spirit of the moon. Spirits! Maybe I can find them and get their help. How are you gonna get there this time? Follow me. So is this the way to the spirit world? You'll have to get there on your own, but I can take you to the most spiritual place in the entire North Pole. What? Oh, we got some greenery? It's the center of all spiritual energy. It's so tranquil. Be quiet! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to focus oh. over here. Oh, he's what he's just dry yeah, himself off with the fire breath? Is that what? Uh, I think so. I want you to guard my daughter. Sure. Oh, that wait, shouldn't fire. be too hard. I mean, I guess, I guess yeah, you twist yeah, my yeah, arm yeah, and all. Yeah, hey, you know. Is there any way we can help? <laughs> How about some quiet? Of koi fish, it looks like the yin and the yang. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Like the yin and the yang <laughs> the dots on their head. He's crossing into the spirit. Whoa. Whoa. I'm perfectly capable of protecting him. Aren't you a big girl now? Ah! Gotta ice him. I didn't come this far to lose to you. Oh. Oh. Uh, just remember, she's got the moon. Yeah, I mean, he, he's so outgunned by like all of our heroes. You found a master, haven't you? That should do it. That'll do it for a minute, anyway. Oh, huh? oh day's breaking. Sunrise. Now. Let's write history. First hit, he's landed. You rise with the moon. I rise with the sun. Oh, oh no. Your city will fall today. Where's Zuko? He took Aang. Where did they go? He's still in the spirit world, though. Oh, oh, come on. Jeez. There right. we go. Part, part one. Boy, that was part one of the uh, the wrap up to the first book, and uh, this is a heck of a battle we got going on. You know, I think we were both kind of questioning if the Water Tribe could just make like a massive tsunami or something and take out all the ships, and they maybe could have when the moon was out, but because that's when they get all their their power. So not happening in the daytime. That's when uh, the Fire Army gets all their all their energy and all their power. So. I gotta hope that Yang, uh, 
that Aang can come through oh, the here. Yin and Yang talk. Yeah, huh? like I was thinking about the Yin and the Yang with the fish, but uh, and, and well, that must have been something about finding balance, right? Which Aang definitely needs. Uh, we've talked uh, numerous episodes about all of our heroes kind of need to get their egos and their <coughs> tempers in check so that they can concentrate a little bit better, uh, have some better planning. But uh, this is going to be a tough one. I don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna deal with the Fire Nation without Aang coming through with something from the spirit world for him. Like I said, I'm, I'm hoping for a big tsunami or something to, to get rid of the ships, but, uh, time will tell. And, uh, all of our crew is definitely, uh, kind of showing their strengths a little bit here. Uh, Katara is going toe to toe now mm -hmm. with, uh, with, with the Prince and he definitely didn't expect that. So like I said, it seems like everybody else is leveling up and he's kind of staying right around the same where he was. So I wonder if that's a, a theme we're going to see going forward. Well, as you saw, this is the beginning, beginning of the of the big battle, and so you just got to wonder what does what does Admiral have in store that he's he's holding secret that he's uh. he said he's going to take care of something, and then you saw that Zuko took off with Aang, so now where is that going to take us from there? But uh, what I really liked is obviously we've seen it how many times it taken up out on the carpet ride before and then <laughs> then now he's got a protector and he got in the fight with the actual fiance who doesn't really like her come on i mean that just writes itself so i am really looking forward to see how that plays out mm. yeah, this is going to be interesting the fleet that the fire nation has is absolutely massive they showed us the catapults now they show you know the the Wow, the ship is chopping through the mm -hmm. ice, and yep. they have actual troops coming through, so it's not just a matter of long-distance weapons. I had really hoped that we were going to get that line of boats and see a giant tsunami or a giant wall of ice or something. Or something. You know, I'm I'm wondering, like, you know, I like start <laughs> like start having these like water bending or like <laughs> imagination <laughs> sessions. Like, couldn't you take the water and turn it into giant ice it's balls and like fire? <laughs> Like cannon, <laughs> like cannon fire ice balls back, kind of. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I did like uh, the teacher in the in the beginning talking about um, the raw talent versus work ethic, discipline, and everything Precisely like that. Insane, because yeah. I mean, that's that's a lesson that we see everywhere. Oh, yeah. um, you know, in the, in the '90s, they made a really great movie about somebody who didn't have a lot of raw talent, but used work ethic, determination, and just consistent hard work over years to actually make. Uh, the practice squad at uh, the Notre Dame football team. I knew um, he was going to throw the most legendary there. movies of all time, and a really solid Rudy. example of raw Rudy. talent versus Rudy. somebody's ability, willingness to uh, to work hard. Uh, arguably the best cinematic adaptation of that lesson. You know, we're here for Avatar. We <laughs> Oak. We're not here to talk about Mr. Participation Trophy Award winner Rudy Ruger. All right, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we so keep him focused. that that <laughs> lesson uh, is one that we've seen in in plenty of uh, in cinema. But it's something you really you really see in everyday life. I don't care what what sport. It's not, it's not even a sports thing. Like what sports? I mean, even even musicians and and, and artists. I'm sure there's so many people out there with so much raw talent and mm. and it's interesting that with katara we're learning that i gotta be honest i feel like she's kind of the combination of both at every turn we're learning that she has more talent mm -hmm. than people had previously thought mm -hmm. and the the reality is that she's willing to work harder than ang is who is you know just being told over and over like uh you know hey you're the one. You're the one. You know. You, you think she's the Neville of the group, uh, yeah, as opposed is, to Ang yeah, being the Harry the Neville Longbottom <laughs> of this story. But I really like it. Yeah, a little anxiety about uh, yeah. the numbers, the sheer numbers that the Fire Nation has come in because it doesn't seem like this northern water bend, the northern water bending tribe, um, is very big in numbers. Obviously, bigger than their southern counterpart, where. Um, Katara and Sokka came from, but uh, definitely doesn't have the numbers to go toe to toe, uh, mano a mano with the Fire Nation. So I think we're going to have to have Aang come through big time. I'm hoping for a little bit of uh, arc with uh, Prince Zuko, maybe uh, maybe turn in the tide. But uh, only one way to find out. We got to finish this one up. There we go. So we're on to part two of the Northern Siege. So for Abaddon Oak, that's Mason Quinn. I'm of course the answer. We'll catch you on the next one, pals. All right, well, here we go. Yeah, okay, let's 20. get into it.
can't believe I lost him. You did everything you could, and now we need to do everything we can to get him back. It's interesting that the fish are still swimming in perfect circle like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You stay here, Momo, in case Aang comes back. <laughs> he just flies off. Yeah. He's moving pretty good. Have any idea how hard it is to drag somebody who's dead weight like that? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to disturb you. I just really need to find the moon and the ocean spirits. Go away. <laughs> Perhaps that thing will help you. Chase it. <laughs> okay. Hello, Aang. Shelter. That is hostile territory. Uh -huh. Just trash <laughs> him in. <laughs> I need to find the ocean and the moon spirits. There is only one spirit I know of who is old enough to remember. The spirit's name is Ko. They call him the face dealer. You must be very careful to show no emotion at all, or he will steal your face. This is Aang we gotta have do this? Mm. Oh, man. I finally have you, but I can't get you home because of this blizzard. There's always something. You're like my sister. Everything always came easy to her. She's a firebending prodigy. My father says she was born lucky. He says I was lucky to be born. Ouch. I've always had to struggle and fight, and that's made me strong. Oh, oh geez. We got those they guys? got mini mm -hmm. catapults mounted on the side of Rhino. Oh, they got those bad those boys. Those things are back. Grappling hooks. Uh, uh, grappling again. hooks again. For animation, the military strategy in this is pretty awesome. If we don't defeat the water tribe before the full moon, they will be undefeatable. I assure you, I have everything under control. Oh, this guy. How? Admiral Choi, prepare to meet your fate. Oh! <laughs> he just <laughs> tossed him overboard. <laughs> Years ago, I stumbled upon a great and powerful secret. The identity of the moon spirit's mortal form. The spirits are not to be trifled with. I've heard rumors about your journey into the spirit world. Oh, he's been there. The face stealer. I want to take his face off. Show no emotion at all. It's going into the cave. It's a hero's journey. I forgot that it was this soon you get to see the face stealer. Welcome. One of your previous incarnations tried to slay me. Of course, that's all behind us. Jeez, this guy. Prince Zuko can't be getting too far in this weather. I need to find the moon and the ocean. Their spirit names are Twee and La. Push and pull. Someone is going to kill them. You've already met them. The fish. Yin and yang. The koi fish. Uh, that was close. <laughs> you have oh, to see the face stealer. That was close. A friend is here to guide you back. Hey, boy. <laughs> He's got a panda, panda. bear. I remember. <laughs> he had the panda before. He was in the spirit world. <laughs> there you go. Ripping these things in half. This dude's doing work. We'll be following this map to a very. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just... How do I get back? That's gotta be A. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Here for a rematch? It's not gonna be much of a match. Moon is out. Yep. We can't just leave him here. Sure we can. He'll die. Let's bring the guy who's constantly trying to kill us. Oh, he's got him. Oh, look at the moon. Oh, jeez. Wow, it just shut him right down. The moon spirit is in trouble. I owe the moon spirit my life. When I was born, I was very sick and very weak. My father pleaded with the spirits to save me. He brought me to the oasis and placed me in the pond. My dark hair turned white and they knew I would live. I am a legend. The Fire Nation will for generations tell stories about the great Zhao. <gasps> Get it off! <laughs> <laughs> Get it, <him>, Momo! <laughs> Don't. It's my destiny. Destroying the moon won't hurt just the water tribe. Everything would fall out of balance. The Fire Nation needs the moon too. Let it go now! Oh! oh. 
You take them both out? Jeez, yeah. badass. Yeah, that's, uh, you gotta... Don't try uncle. It looks oh, like yeah, see. It's not over. What? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's a big fish. Bye. <laughs> you tried to have me killed! You freed the Avatar. I had no choice. You should have chosen to accept your failure. Oh, these guys are gonna have it out. It's too late. You have been touched by the moon spirit. Some of its life is in you. Yes. Uh, yeah, that is weird that her eyes are still blue and everything. Yeah. It's all black and white. I can give it back. <sighs> She's gone. <laughs> How about don't just push him back? How about destroy all of it? Yeah. That'll work. <laughs> there. How about that? Ah, there's, there's our, our tsunami. tsunami. There you go. <laughs> Goodbye, Saka. It can't be. Oh yeah, it is. Take my hand. I oh, wouldn't do it. So is he really gone now too? It's time we helped rebuild our sister tribe. What about Aang? He better get used to calling you Master Katara. Hmm. <laughs> There we go. The spirits gave me a vision. I knew this day would come. You must be proud. Does he kind of sound like Optimus Prime to you right now? Maybe a little. I'm tired. A man needs his rest. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, where's our guy? Yeah. I have oh, a sister for you. Uh, you'll be... Uh, uh, be a new head baddie in charge here oh man the final oh, that was the end of uh, book one final episode of book one and you know just like i thought about Aang getting more and more powerful he chose the last episode to finally harness everything bring it together we saw him go into the spirit world and the uh the face stealer that was pretty <laughs> gross if i'm honest like <laughs> a, a, some kind of gross uh earwig with faces on it it was but well because yeah. he stole faces so that was all their faces <sighs> yeah makes sense i suppose but uh yeah so we saw uh like i said ang kind of unleash what we saw of kind of his true power a little bit uh katara uh put up one hell of a fight against uh the prince we saw that and uh yue had to sacrifice herself essentially to keep balance within the whole world so that you know not only the water nation would survive but everybody else and that was kind of her destiny that she was born with so that was a really cool uh kind of angle that i didn't see coming and you know, Sokka just can't catch a break. You know, he meets a girl, <laughs> likes her, everything's going well. She's got a fiancé, and she has to sacrifice herself for the essentially greater, yeah. all of humanity uh, in this world that we're seeing. So I'm, wow. So now we get to find out uh, what the next book is like, because this one was all in all a uh, fantastic series so far. Really liked where it went. Character development, arcs, stories, callbacks with other characters. Uh, the voice acting was a lot of fun to pick up different actors that we we kind of recognized. Uh, Lucius Malfoy. You know, so that was a lot of fun. And, and my, my guy Mako from Conan the Barbarian, I'll never forget that voice. So all in all, a lot of fun. You know, I I really loved it because I was just waiting to get to this point where you got to see him just be that badass there for a little bit again, just throwing ships aside like they're nothing, <laughs> swatting off. I, mean, I know you called him Godzilla, but it was just it was a lot of fun to watch him get to that point. And then, yeah, it was awesome that like you saw it in black and white when the moon went out, her eyes were still blue, giving you the signal that oh crap, we're gonna have to lose her to be able to get back the moon because as I showed, the moon is very important to not just waterbenders but to everyone just because everyone needs it to survive and so i i was really happy to see that and then see uh the, gen the general get his comeuppance yeah now is he really gone i mean i, 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 mean, I don't to know find out and now you get to see uh you get to see the daughter which uh 
Well, you'll be seeing this bitch a lot. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, answer. Oh, wow. uh, you know, an, an interesting final lesson for me as far as um, as far as book one goes, um, coming from General, uh, General Zhao, uh, be careful how much energy, how much of your own energy you put in trying to bring down someone else because the outcome that you think you're going to uh, you're going to see by gaining the upper hand or winning or whatever your plans might be um, might backfire on you and the, uh, the the things that you have to do to put yourself in the position you thought was going to make you happy may end up uh I don't know, you can call it karma, you can call it backfiring, you can call whatever. And I think that was that was interesting. General Zhao was so set on taking out uh, the the Northern Water Tribe that he was willing to take the moon from the sky. I mean, that's that's po- I mean, that's that's really powerful. Like you know, there's 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 so many um, stories, uh, you know, great mythology about the sun and the moon, um, whether it be Greek, whether it be native mythology, whether it be whatever about the moon and the sky. And of course, um, they had their own mythology about, you know, them being, you know, spirits who, who came to our world. And there was somebody who, to get their way to win their battle, was literally willing to take the moon from the sky. And of course, we got the wise uncle that came in and uh, reminded him of the implications that that would have for everybody. And I thought that's like a really solid lesson. It's a little bit, I don't know, maybe a, uh, a little less superficial than some of the other lessons that we've had here. But um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, you know, it was interesting seeing Aang going to the spirit world and, and coming back, you know, they throw in some comedy there. Um, it was, I don't know, nice, but what I expected of Aang to not leave Zuko out in the cold to die. So, I mean, that was, uh, you know, a, a moment that showed his true character. And he's not just a kid with a bunch of powers. He's, you know, he's somebody with empathy and, uh, and at the end of the day wanted to do the right thing. I think a lot of people would have been like mm-hmm. kind of what Sokka was like yeah this is the guy who's been trying to take <laughs> sure we will yeah. uh you know <laughs> probably make life easier just to uh just to leave him there but Aang did the right thing in the end yeah Sokka man poor, poor <sighs> fella poor fella it was just um, starting to go so good for him yeah it was interesting how she just kind of disappeared but again she was on she was on the moon's borrowed time yep. and the life that was given to her from the moon she gave she gave it back and so um you know, if there's a, if there's a way you're gonna go out, uh, you know, we should all be so lucky that that's that's how we go. So uh, this was a a, a fun um, book one. Uh, started off very lighthearted, mm-hmm. and as everybody had uh, said, it would. You know, and turned into some 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 great lessons. Uh, a lot more substance than I thought we would get from a. You know, whether you want to call it uh, a cartoon or an animation or anime, I know that's been, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> debated in the comments, baited, <laughs> debated in the comments. Um, but I think regardless of how, however you categorize this program, um, it was it was really good. And you know what I would love to see, which like I, w- I would love to see a like a, an actual this with actors and in and, and people in a, a like yeah, a, a live like action a movie yeah. well, adaptation they did that. Of this. they did that wait what wasn't good let's not discuss it oh no they did mm-hmm. and i can tell by answer's <laughs> face that it wasn't good <laughs> can we get okay can we get somebody good to come in and do that oh, wait I, they did did m night Shyamalan was the one behind it did somebody i thought somebody in the comments said something was it like a play like a like a broadway live or did they do like a movie? They did a live action movie. Oh no! Yeah. Well, M Night Shyamalan the, has the, his talents the, we, and we, his we creative. Can, like only, only, please don't. Only if you guys want us to watch it, we'll be watching. Was it like one movie or was it like Just a one series? Because they tried to shove all of book one into one two-hour movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. It just. 
I had such sounds high like hopes. somebody from a studio was like, "Oh, this uh, this anime show did great. We should we should M. capitalize on it." Supposedly yeah. said he was walking through the living room. His son was watching it and was like, "I'm gonna make this a no movie." And I'm gonna take an entire and it didn't yeah. work out twenty so well, episodes, wow. each about a half yeah. hour long, mm-hmm. and uh, combine it yeah. into uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that sad take, day. taking an entire <laughs> a very very long story yes. and trying to compress it down into a very short period tw- of time. Tw- what, what was there? Twenty episodes? Yeah, twenty books. That rings you know, twenty chapters <laughs> and shove it into one. <laughs> Yeah, I just sorry. Uh, well, this is this has been a ton of fun. Um, absolute uh, grand slam, as always, from everybody in the recommendations. Answer, you did not overhype this. No, I did so, not. Not that I thought and you I, would. And I oh, and I and obviously, you know, I love it. So I, I was putting over like gangbusters, and so that's what that's why I said from the beginning I was just just wanted you guys to watch because. Like, like you said back in the day when you would have someone watch a movie you already seen and you just sit there like watching. Sit there watching. Sit there watching like, oh, wait, wait till they see this part. <laughs> <laughs> this part. Because I was much like the Harry Potter fans watching us, like, just going. <laughs> watch yeah, going yeah. We know. <laughs> we know. We know. Well, just wait. Just wait, guys. So so thank you very much. So for Appleton Oak, that's Mason Quinn. I'm, of course, the answer. See you on the next one, pals.